how do you edit bright and blown out images? In this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through three specific techniques inside of Lightroom Classic, not only on how to get great results, but also how to use some of Lightroom's latest features. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. You know how I like to do. I want to get straight into things. You guys can start by actually downloading the exercise file. If you click the link in the description of the video, you can download that file, pop it into Lightroom Classic. And while you're doing that, I'll walk through a bit of why you might want to use this technique and a couple ideas when using this technique, at least from the shooting side. So first, well, we might get to a bright or blown out image for a number of reasons. It could be stylistic, meaning we made the conscious decision to shoot that way, or it could just be a mistake, uh, which we all do, or it could be somewhere in between, you know, like it's the mistake that we cover with artistic decision. Oh yeah, I totally meant to do that but it's really just a mistake. We all know we do this too. Okay, either way, it doesn't really matter. In this instance, I'm actually using the GFX 100 for the first time and I'm doing a natural light shoot, putting the camera in difficult situations to see what kind of dynamic range I can get out of it. So in the shoot, you'll actually noticing me placing my model in that shadow and exposing, uh, well, because we're basically shooting into this highlight directly behind her. So we have this shadow on the left, we have her in the shadow, we have this bright, bright highlight midday sun behind her. Now, one thing when you are doing this technique, if you're, whether it's intentional or not, it's gonna help a lot to actually shoot raw files because you have a lot more leeway, a lot more information in those files. And the three techniques I'm gonna show you, they can be kind of mix and match. You can use all three or just some of them. You know what, let's just get straight into it. So by now, that should have given you enough time to load your file or to find an image of your own. Okay, I'm gonna press Shift F twice just to go full screen. I have the file right here inside of the develop module. I'm gonna click reset, just so you know, there's no funny business going on. This is a raw file coming off the GFX 100. What we'll do first is go ahead and just make a, a little bit of a temperature adjustment, okay? I'm just gonna look where skin tones are. Uh, so I'm brightening for one second before I take it back down. So I'm gonna take it to about 6,800. Uh, there really isn't a, well, you could say that there is a right and a wrong, but so much of temperature and all the adjustments that we make are just subjective. I like to edit a bit on the warm side. You put your temperature where you'd like it, but this is gonna be our baseline. So from here, with no other settings made, I'm gonna press Control apostrophe or Command apostrophe to create a virtual copy. The first technique that I wanna teach you is a matte finish. See. When you have a bright or blown out image, and this works incredibly well on, 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 on really any bright or blown out image, but especially when you've actually exposed it somewhere up here, this is really the technique that you're gonna use and you're gonna stick to. And what this is, is you'll go down to the tone curve and you're going to make sure that you're editing in this point curve view. See that the parametric curve and the point curve are two different things and they're actually independent. So make sure you're in the point curve and what you'll do is pull down the highlight side. Now what you're telling Lightroom or any raw editor is that any whites that are above this line are just gonna go to bright gray. And we could do the same thing on the black side, right? Where we go anything that is darker than this line. And usually I'll leave this between, let's say five to 10 is a good safe number. The higher you go, the more of this kind of fade it's gonna have, right? But I'm gonna leave this maybe around like a seven or eight. So anywhere below that goes to dark gray. And then what I'm gonna do is add back mid-tone contrast. So first starting in the highlights, I'm gonna pull back and bring some of the highlights back up. And then going to mid-tone shadows, I'm gonna bring contrast back by pulling mid-tone shadows down. And you can land here wherever you'd like. You know, I'm gonna go somewhere that looks pleasing. Don't make huge adjustments because you'll notice that when the curve gets, uh, when you start creating wonky curves or, or wonky shapes in this curve, you'll notice that you get posterization in the color. So what I like to make sure that I do is keep the graduation in this curve subtle. And that makes sure that the, the color graduation and tonal graduation stays subtle and natural as well. 
So this already looks really nice, and we can see that by just comparing these two. So look, this was just the white balance adjustment at the very beginning, and this is now that little matte finish that we just did. So what it does is takes the edge off of those really bright tones. In fact, if I wanted to stop here, because the next technique we're gonna go into HDR, okay? So before we get there, I'm gonna say this. If you're gonna to go to that next technique of doing an HDR and pulling back and balancing shadows and highlights, which I'm gonna show you how to do, but you need to have shot this as a raw file and you need to have made sure that you captured as much dynamic range as possible, which means that you have most of your shadows and you've got as much of the highlights the camera's gonna pick up. You didn't expose it down here where it's completely underexposed and you didn't expose it up here where it's completely overexposed and you lost all detail, right? If you did, then you're just gonna stick to this first technique, okay? And, and maybe the third technique, which we'll get to in a second. But if you did, stick to this one. And, and what we would do from here basically is just adjust the exposure up and add in a little contrast. And, and really you'd call it a day at this spot, okay? So let's take a look. This would be your first finishing point. So you can take these techniques, you can layer them, which we're going to do, um, because I want you to see the different results at each step or you can just do one of them or two of them. It's completely up to you. So at this point, let's go to this second technique. I'm gonna create another virtual copy by pressing Control apostrophe or Command apostrophe if you're on a Mac. And what we'll do now is for this one, I'm gonna adjust the exposure should be fine where it's at like 0.5 up, um, but I'll be adjusting contrast independently. So we'll just zero that out real quick. The HDR technique, so what we're going to do is combine HDR adjustments and HSL. And what this means is HDR is high dynamic range. So what we're going to do is actually lift shadows, pull the highlights, and balance things out to get to a higher dynamic range image. This is where you need to have shot the image as a raw file and having most of the information there. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do here is pull down on the highlights and pull down on the whites a bit. I like to take the highlights down a lot and the whites down a little. And same thing on the shadow side. I like to bring the shadows up a lot and the blacks down a bit. So this is how I kind of control overall contrast is I'm, I'm using my white point as well as my blacks to control contrast in the image. One important thing that you're already noticing is that we have to combine HSL adjustments with this technique because our colors are going to tend to get kind of nuclear whenever you're doing these HDR adjustments, right? So what I'm going to do now is go down to HSL and I'm going to target, you can really go anywhere. If you want to color grade, you're going to change hue and luminance, but let's focus on just fixing some of the oversaturated areas. So I'm gonna click the point adjustment tool and bring it, for example, over these bright greens and yellows. And I'm gonna pull those back, okay? In fact, if you wanna compare it, you can almost compare it to the prior image. See, if I don't make that adjustment, look at how crazy the colors are compared to that prior image, right? So what I'm really doing is getting this back to a place where it looks natural to me. And again, this is stylistic, right? So you can go however far you want on this and kind of leave it. I'm gonna pull back the oranges a bit. You can use the, the point tool or you can simply, you know, uh, just make adjustments in these different ranges. I'm also gonna do this in the blues as well. So to do it in the blues, you have to find an area that kind of is blue. Uh, sometimes the sky can go white. So it makes it easier just to select. Uh, the, the slider itself. Okay, now this looks a lot more natural. See, without that adjustment, look at the colors. It just looks hypersaturated. And if you like that look, by all means, but I wanna show you how to get it back to something natural first. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna add a bit of contrast to the image. I might even tweak the curve just a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up a little bit Actually, I'm just going to balance out. If you want to make subtle adjustments to this point curve, by the way, if you bring your mouse over it and you click up and down on the keyboard, you can make minor one point adjustments. This is very helpful if you want to get really precise uh, with your adjustments. Okay, I'm going to make that adjustment there. And, and keep in mind that you bring this point up and you get that harsh white back. So if you want it to be brighter, you can always bring the highlight point back but I like it down because it creates a little bit more of a, a refined look to the image. Now this additional layer, so we just did HDR plus HSL, it takes the image now from this to this. So again, we have another layer of adjustments 
that can help get to a different look, right? So here we're really leaning into the whites and the brights of the image. Here we're balancing out quite a bit more, and I might even just add a little tiny bit more contrast to the image. One thing that I like to avoid on images that are, are bright and airy like this one is a lot of edge vignetting. Whenever you add a lot of vignetting, and usually we do that through like a mask, like say for example, I'm just going to add in, I'm using visual flow tools on the left side. Um, and, and all this is doing is just adding in a mask directly over our subject or directly over the center of the image that I can move and it's pulling exposure down. Okay. So you could do the same thing just by adding a radial gradient and pulling down an exposure. But the thing is that whenever I have bright edges, I don't like creating heavy, um, vignettes that come into the image because it feels unnatural to me. So that's something that I tend uh, tend to avoid. And if I am going to add any type of a vignette, it's going to be very subtle. Just to, just to keep this in mind, whenever your edges are bright, keep your, your vignetting to zero or just very subtle in general. Okay. So here is that second step. So if we look at all three of these now, you can see that let's select all three. I pressed uh, shift to grab all three, and then I'm going to press N to jump into survey view. Here's the raw. Here's step one with just the matte finish and then step two with HDR plus that matte finish. And you can see how we retain a bit more tone. It's a little bit more soft. I'm not gonna say one or the other is more pleasing because it's really a, a stylistic thing, right? So let's go now to step three. And this is where we're gonna incorporate selections and local adjustments to basically make uh, exposure adjustments right over our subject. This is where you're gonna have even more control. And so what we could do actually is bring the exposure down a little bit more. And I'm gonna actually bring it to that zero point right here where it was kind of naturally set to, okay? And what I'm gonna do is go to the masking tool and I'm gonna press select subject. This is where you want the latest update in Lightroom Classic because it's gonna use Adobe's new AI features to select out the subject and it does a beautiful job doing it. So once the subject is selected, I'll go ahead and turn off overlay. And your first instinct might be to raise exposure. I'm going to show you why that's a bad idea. In fact, what we'll do is create one where we raise exposure on this. And then I'm going to create a virtual copy. And this go around, we're not going to raise exposure. See, when you raise exposure like that, it kind of creates this unnatural vibe to the image. Let's go back just a second. Uh, what did I do? Okay. It, it makes the subject look like it just doesn't look natural. And so instead of raising exposure, what I actually like to do is control the subject's brightness through highlights and through the white point. So I'm actually gonna add highlights and I'm actually gonna add whites and I can even just add a little bit of shadows to kind of boost her up a bit. So I'm using the same kind of HDR based adjustments to control specific areas of her, her body and skin tone. And that way we get to a much more natural look. Now you can use a tiny bit of exposure if you want. I would recommend you keep this really subtle. And if you feel like your contrast went too far, right? You might be inclined to like start raising blacks, but I would say don't do that because you're actually gonna get a fade on, the, on, on your subject. So if I take blacks up, you'll notice she starts to look faded compared to the rest of the image, right? So instead, use your contrast adjustment so you get an overall adjustment to her, her skin tone and, and to, to everything on her, right? And now we start getting this really natural pop. So look at this and compare it to where we just adjusted for exposure, right? The prior image, we just boosted the exposure. Whereas on the second one, we only used highlights, whites, and kind of did basic tonal adjustments to control the brightness of our skin. And then we get to an entirely new place. See, with the HDR technique and without that selection, we got to this, right? Where the background's still pretty bright and the subject's at a good exposure. But now we can take the background and, and kind of bring the exposure down and bring the subject up and we lift her out even further. So I want you to see these kind of four steps along this way, right? So step one was that raw file. If you have just a blown out image and you didn't retain enough information, stop with that matte finish on the tone curve, make your color adjustments and you're good to go. If you shot raw and you have the information, you can go to the next step, which is that HDR uh, look, right? And so we're adding back additional tone and pulling back things. And if you have the latest version of Lightroom, you can very easily make a selection automatically and then pull down the exposure of everything else and lift up just the subject themselves. 
And the difference is absolutely massive between those four. In fact, if I were just to select the first and the last, you'll be blown away by this. It looks crazy from going from that raw file that basically looks almost like a mistake to this final image that looks completely intentional. And the beauty about this is, well, once you understand it, it doesn't have to just be a mistake anymore, right? When you're shooting, you can actually shoot intentionally because you know exactly what you can do in post. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you all enjoyed, I'd love for you to do what you do. Go ahead and leave a comment below. I actually read all of your comments. I get ideas from them. They're fantastic. I do respond when I can as well. In the meantime, you guys can follow me at PyGersa. And of course, we'd love for you to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. Turn on your notifications. You know the drill. You've been here a while. You know how YouTube works. If you dig it, follow. That's it. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.